Carmen. Thanks for coming on and spending your last day in Sydney for a while yeah. here. Yeah. What a journey it's been. We've oh, known each other crazy. for about two years, right? Yeah, it's been two and a half now, I think. Yeah. Like, I joined in May 2017. It's been something. two and a half. Yeah. And that. in that time, you've done some pretty incredible things and mm. played for China and Oztag yeah. and yeah. rehabbed two shoulders at the yeah. same time. Let's yeah. kind of take it back to the start. Where were you at? when you first joined in May of 2017 and what yeah. made you want to kind of jump on board in the first place? Sure. So May of 2017, um, I was pretty much pretty injured um, at that point in time. I'd been recovering for about four or five years from patellar tendonitis in both knees, um, had an unstable shoulder that had popped out twice, two or three times as well. Um, and basically, I was just a little bit lost in terms of what I wanted out of my, um, I guess, athletic career, um, what I wanted to do with the gym, um, and where I wanted to go with all of that kind of thing. So I kind of, I guess, I just saw this as an opportunity to better myself and get an understanding, and get a coach, um, and just learn um, as well. As, as seeing as I'm also a strength and conditioning coach, Indeed. I, I just wanted that. to, Great. you know, obviously get that knowledge on board as well as being obviously the best athlete that I could be. So how does someone who's a strength coach and realistically compared to say the average athlete, you know a hell of a lot more as an EP as well, you've done over four years of study. What makes you still go, oh, I see the value yeah. in getting a coach like one of us or Scott in this case yeah. to help you with your own training when you realistically have a great knowledge base mm -hmm. and theoretically could have done it yourself? Yeah, I believe like to be a good coach, you have to be coached and so in saying that no one is the best that they can be. Um, you always got to surround yourself with people that are smarter than you um, and you're always constantly learning. So I think it's it's a bad approach if you as a coach think that you know it all and think that you can program it all. Um, yes, you probably could as well, but I wanted to try and achieve better for myself at every point in my career and in my life. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that I was learning from the best and being the best as well. So that just meant you know outsourcing to someone that was smarter than me and to people that were, it was a team that was smarter than me too. You've seen us evolve mm. like quite a lot over the past yeah. two and a half years. It's been a journey, huh? Tell me yeah. about like, if you were to contrast that or kind of from your perspective, mm. what have you seen change with AA and where were you at when you first came on compared to where we're at now? And yeah. tell me a bit about that experience. Sure, well, I first heard about you guys ages back when you guys were in Pimble. So your little garage gym kind of set up and then obviously you guys moved to our time in. Um, and still, you know, starting from the bottom up, it was, you know, a yellow and grey gym at the very, very beginning. Um, and then I remember walking in and being like, this is a sick setup, and you had big plans for the future as well. But never did I think that it would be as good as this. Like, we're currently sitting, obviously, you know, in a little, like, top half of it. There's books everywhere, there's normal text, there's, you know, this all this crazy stuff. So, like, from... You know, the two and a half years that I've seen it, it's just grown and grown. And, you know, I barely know anyone's name here anymore. Like, I used to know everyone's name. And now it's, you know, new athletes through the door every other day. So it's crazy. Like, it's so good. Like, but the culture's always, has still always been there. You know, we've always worked for each other. And we've always tried to be for each other through PBs, whatever it is. You've yeah. gone through a lot of ups and downs in those two and a half years. Like, yeah. some awesome moments playing for China and whatnot. Yeah. Some tough moments, bilateral shoulder mm -hmm. surgery. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So I first came in wanting to, um, aside from being injured and all that, I had just made the national team for Oztag. So I was obviously very excited, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't get injured so I could play that competition. So it was in November and I'd played that competition for the Sydney Warriors. Um, that was really fun. And then the next step, I'd actually made it into a World Cup, which was last year. So last year was a bit of a tumultuous year. I played rugby, I played sevens, I played fifteens, um, I played for Ringo Rats and all that kind of thing. So my journey has kind of changed codes over quite a few years. Um, but at the end of the day, I've always wanted to play footy. Um, so like the last year also in the 2019 has probably been the biggest year of change for me because I've had bilateral shoulder surgery. Um, so I just decided to get obviously my, my shoulders fixed once and for all after six dislocations on one side and one dislocation on the other. I was just a bit, but time to just get it fixed. 
Um, and the, the team at AA have been obviously super helpful to me, especially Nilesh, Scott, you know, Adam now on board as well, the physios. Like everyone has helped me just be the best athlete that I could be. And I obviously couldn't have be, I couldn't be here like playing Oceania next week without you guys. Like, Perfect segue. You yeah. did the segue for me. What are you, where are you off to? What's the plans now? Yeah. Why are we having this conversation? Obviously, cool. you're going away. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. So next week, actually in, in three days, I'll be going to Oceania Cup, which is essentially just um, a big tournament for Oztag in New Zealand. It's a follow-up to the World Cup. Um, I'm playing for Team China, but um, we're trying to win gold this time. So we're going to be up against um, teams that are strong, quite strong, like New Zealand, um, Fiji, Vietnam, and that kind of thing. No Australia? No Australia. So they're actually yeah. playing in Big Four, which is another competition later yeah. on. Um, but they've opted not to play in Oceania. So they were our main rivals in yeah. World Cup. So Because you hoping... lost to them from memory. Yeah, we lost yeah. to them in the grand final. Uh, it was like 7-2 or 7-1 or something yeah. like that. But they had clean swept their pool 25-0 with every single team. And so we had gone up and obviously not expecting to lose, but not trying to do our best, obviously. Yeah, totally. Um, and, so, and did relatively well if yeah, they were yeah, yeah. winning 25 nil. Exactly. So we were just trying matches. to obviously just not make a fool of ourselves, yeah. really, to be honest. But we did pretty well and we wanted to follow that up at Oceana. So Get now we have a really strong team. I'm playing middle. Um, I'm really hoping that, you know, we've got the backup and support that we can do to be the best that we can do. And why are you not coming back to Sydney after the, after the cup? Yeah, so big change is happening. But obviously I, I wanted to... It's been two years since I started work. Um, proper work as a contractor yeah. um, at Fitness First as an exercise physiologist and I thought it's just a bit of a time to change, um, a bit of time to move away and reevaluate what I want to do but also do something that I love. So I'm currently going to Canada and moving to Canada on a two-year working visa um, and I'll be working as an exercise physiologist over there too. So good. Yeah. I want to say thank you. Thank you for putting yeah. your faith in us from right back in the early days. Um, before we really had much to stand on really. I had some big ideas, yeah. but I didn't necessarily have a lot of the systems and the technology and the stuff you mentioned before to, yeah. to back it all up. Um, it's been amazing to have you yeah. a part of the gym for all that yeah. time. Um, and we really, Scott, myself, Lockie, all the guys, we feel really yeah. honored to have spent yeah. as much time as we got to spend with you. I know Mandy and a few other yeah. little girls, are, yeah, you're gonna, they're gonna miss you. Um, we're gonna miss you too. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like exciting times for you. And yeah, well, I mean, it's comforting to know that I've always still got you guys at home. Um, and, you know, like, these are my roots and, you know, I'm just expanding that and connecting around the world. So good. So Come and thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. No problems. There you go. Too good. Yeah, I mean, it is crazy. Like, it has been two and a half years and I can't believe it actually is over. Not over, but, you know, I will be back. Yeah, I don't but know for a time. what I'm going to do when I come back. But yeah. I'm hoping to still play. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Nice. That was awesome. Yeah. Hey, Ferg. <laughs> oh, you could have gone. <laughs> we were, yeah. We, oh, you could have gone. It's all good. Um, thanks, Carmen. Yeah, Appreciate no problem. You're, is there anything that I asked her that you didn't want me to? You want me to cut out? Yeah, no. Nah, all, all good. Everything in there is fine. Perfect.